What's up, guys? Stinky Cash here. Today, as you might have already guessed, I want to talk a little bit about silver. And what you're looking at right now is a custom poured one kilogram Stinky Cash silver bar. Look at that. How beautiful. Woo! Stinky cash. I hand poured that into a custom mold to get my custom one kilogram stinky cash silver bar. It's, it's pure 0.99 silver. And uh, it's just something to commemorate my channel. I've put a lot of years into this. And uh, it's just something I thought I would make for myself with, with some melted down junk silver. And uh, in this frame, I thought I'd do this video uh, live on, on camera instead of just doing like a, a screenshot of my computer. Because I thought it would be more interesting to look at some silver as I talk. Behind the Stinky Cash Bar, I've got the one ounce Silver Eagles. And in front of the Stinky Cash Bar, I've got some uh, Kennedy Half Dollars from 1964. These are 90% silver. And they added Kennedy onto this coin and replaced Benjamin Franklin after he was assassinated. Ironically, this is like the last silver coin minted by the United States government. Oh, Kennedy. I still love Kennedy. That's why I collect the, the 50 cent halves. But uh, let's talk about silver. I want to talk about silver eagles. And I want to talk about some trickery or uh, what some might call wizardry that happened when the Federal Reserve was signed into law and when Federal Reserve notes replaced silver certificates. So it used to be that the dollar, and actually it still is this way, the dollar is defined by a weight of silver. The dollar has never been redefined. A dollar is still a set weight of silver. And back before 1965, like back in 1964, when dimes, quarters, and half dollars were made of this 90% silver, any combination of this constitutional silver that equals a dollar forty would give you one ounce of silver. So if you had say two half dollars and four and four dimes from 1964, that would be a dollar forty. That would be about one ounce of silver. Same goes if you had four quarters and four dimes or 14 dimes. Dollar forty of constitutional silver is one ounce of silver. So you could say that prior to 1965, silver cost a dollar forty. If you had a dollar forty worth of change, you had one ounce of silver. A dollar forty bought one ounce of silver. How much does it take? How many dollars does it take to buy one ounce of silver today? Or a better question, to rephrase that question. How many Federal Reserve notes does it take to buy one ounce of silver? Because a dollar is still set as a weight of silver. It was never redefined. So a silver dollar is a silver dollar. These one ounce gold eagles, I'm not going to open the tubes. I don't open these tubes. But a one ounce gold eagle has a one dollar denomination on the coin. And you say, well, that coin, it says $1, but it's worth more than $1. It's worth closer to $20. And that's where I say you're wrong. That coin is, is worth a dollar. Since 1986, one ounce of pure silver is $1, according to a Silver Eagle. The dollar has never lost its value. What's lost its value is this baby. The $1 Federal Reserve Note. A dollar is still a dollar. A silver eagle is still a silver eagle. It still takes one dollar to buy one eagle. It takes 20 Federal Reserve notes to buy one silver eagle. And we need to start distinguishing the difference between dollars and Federal Reserve notes because there is clearly a difference. Clearly a difference. Back in 19, uh, the early 20th century, this would have been a silver certificate. I don't own a silver certificate, so I can't show you. But on the top where it says Federal Reserve Note, it would have said silver certificate. And this stamp that represents the, the F Federal Reserve Bank 
which is Atlanta, Georgia, that would have had a stamp uh, that said, you know, silver. And it would have said redeemable at a federal at a, at a at the United States Treasury one one ounce of or one silver dollar. That's what it would have said on a silver certificate. The Federal Reserve started printing their own currency, Federal Reserve notes, and they made it look exactly like the existing silver certificates and the existing United States Treasury notes. This is counterfeit. They purposely made this bill look exactly like the silver certificates so that the, the, the general population wouldn't know the difference. So that you would think this $1 Federal Reserve note is equal to the $1 silver certificate just because they look exactly the same. And at one, at one point in time, that may have been true. But over time, what has happened to the silver certificate compared to the Federal Reserve note? Well, one silver certificate is still equal to one silver dollar. How much does it cost you in Federal Reserve notes to buy one silver Morgan dollar? $15, $20? How much does it cost you to buy one silver eagle that has a $1 denomination on it? About $20? So we need to start distinguishing the difference between the dollar and the Federal Reserve note because they want you to think it's the same thing. They want you to refer to this, as, to this Federal Reserve note as dollars. And we do. But it's not. This is counterfeit. This is wizardry. Every currency on earth uses a different symbol. The dollar uses the S with the line through it. But what about the S with the two lines to it? See, I think there's a difference. The Federal Reserve note is a different currency than the United States Treasury note. It's a different currency than a silver certificate. It's issued by a different entity. So they shouldn't have been able to use the same lingo, dollar. They shouldn't have been able to use the same symbol. The dollar, the dollar sign. But maybe they didn't. Maybe there's a difference between the dollar sign with two lines through it and the dollar sign with just one line through it. Maybe that's part of the wizardry to make you think you're spending dollars, but you're not spending dollars. You're spending Federal Reserve notes. Big difference. Would you rather have this piece of paper? What would you rather have? This beautiful one kilogram. Stinky cash. Fine silver bar. Hand poured. One of a kind. Only one in existence. So, back when the government uh, signed the Coinage Act of 1792, they set the dollar as silver and, and they issued the, uh, the weights and measures of all the coins. Back then, they set the silver-gold ratio to 15 to 1. It would have taken 15 silver ounces to, to trade for one gold ounce. Today... The silver gold ratio is over 82 to 1. It would take 82 silver ounces. It would take 1, 2, 3, 4, basically four tubes of these silver eagles to trade for one gold eagle. But back 200 years ago, that ratio was about 15 to 1. Now it's 83 to 1. So, so gold has actually kept its value over silver. Silver has um, depreciated relative to gold. But you have to think about the denominations that are on these coins minted by the United States government. A one-ounce silver eagle has a $1 denomination on it. And a one-ounce gold eagle has a $50 denomination on it. So as of 1986, the government has set, in terms of the denominations on the one-ounce coins, the government has basically declared a 50 to 1 silver to gold ratio. A one-ounce silver eagle is $1, and a one-ounce gold eagle is $50. So it should be a 50 to 1 ratio according to the government. But right now, it's trading at 82 to 83 to 1. So I expect to see silver go up in value relative to gold. We're going to see that gold-silver ratio start to fall. And uh, that's why right now I'm, I'm heavily invested in silver, but I don't own any gold. It, gold is too expensive to buy right now. So, I, so I basically, I was forced to buy silver, and I hope one day that the silver-gold ratio goes down, and then I'll be able to trade my silver for gold and, and get it cheaper that way. So yeah, you ever see that meme that floats around the internet that shows the value of the dollar and how much uh, the, the dollar has lost in value since 1913? And, and it'll, it'll have this, this it'll, it, the meme is like a dollar in a downward chart that shows how much value. It, it'll say, the, the, the U.S. dollar has lost 97% of its value since 1913. No. The U.S. dollar, as defined by silver, is the same as it ever was. 
Silver coin is a silver coin. Never changes. What's gone down in value since 1913, what's gone down in value 97% since 1913, is not the US dollar. It's the Federal Reserve note. And there is a difference. But they don't want you to know the difference. Think about it. They want you to think a Federal Reserve note is a dollar. That's the wizardry. Think about what they teach us in, uh, in public school. Think about what they teach the sheeple in terms of uh, the Great Depression, the bank run of the Great Depression, right? They make us think that all these people in the country all went to the bank at the same day to withdraw their dollars, to withdraw their money. And when we're taught that, this is what we think of as money. So people think that during the Great Depression, people went to the bank to withdraw Federal Reserve, Reserve notes. They think that people went to the bank, there was a bank run on paper. No, that doesn't make any sense. If there was a bank run on paper, they could have just printed more paper. What was actually happening during that bank run, the bank run wasn't a bank run, it was a gold run. It was a gold run. People knew what money was back then. People were taking their Federal Reserve notes. People were withdrawing their Federal Reserve notes out of the bank to exchange it for gold. They were trying to withdraw their gold. There wasn't enough gold because of fractional reserve banking. Most sheeple don't understand that. It wasn't a fight for paper. It was a fight for the gold. People knew what money was back then. That's why FDR had to end the gold standard in 1933, signed the Gold Confiscation Act. He made it illegal to own gold. Imagine if these coins were gold. It would have been illegal for me to own that much gold in 1934, 1935. All the way up until the 70s, it would have been illegal for me to own that much gold. Why would the government make it illegal to own an element a harmless element like gold. Think about that. It's the real money. It's the real money. And it's still the real money that this bank right here, the Federal Reserve, it's still the, the actual money that central banks hoard. So when Nixon closed the gold window in 1971, he, he ended the convertibility of the, of the Federal Reserve note into gold for, for foreign nations. That, that privilege had already been ended to the general uh, United States population. But it was still allowed by central banks around the world. But when he closed that gold window, what do you think happened to the gold? We still have the gold. Yeah, you can't convert paper into gold on demand. But that gold still exists. Basically what happened, when, when FDR signed that Gold Confiscation Act, part of that was the United States Treasury repatriating the, the physical gold bullion from the Federal Reserve. So all the gold bullion, the physical gold bullion that was held at the Federal Reserve banks was taken back by the United States Treasury. And the United States Treasury then issued the Federal Reserve gold certificates. So now, so now we have, we've got the United States Treasury. They own all the physical gold. And the Federal Reserve has gold certificates, which are a claim on that gold. Kind of like a mortgage on a house. So the United States, we own the house, but the bank holds the mortgage. So technically, the, the bank owns the house, but, but we do. You understand? It's the same thing. So the Federal Reserve holds the gold certificates, the claim on the gold held by the Treasury. Now, the Federal Reserve has those gold certificates, and with those gold certificates, they use the gold certificates as collateral to issue Federal Reserve notes. And at one point in time, there had to be a set ratio between gold certificates held by the Fed and Federal Reserve notes issued by the Fed. It had to be about a 35% backing, gold certificates to Federal Reserve notes. They've long done away with that uh, limit. So now it's basically an, an endless limit of Federal Reserve notes to gold certificates. But basically, the Treasury holds the gold. The Federal Reserve holds the gold certificates. With those gold certificates as collateral, the Fed issues Federal Reserve notes. That's the currency that we use today. Then when the United States government needs to borrow money, they issue Treasury bonds. They swap the Treasury bonds with the Federal Reserve and get back Federal Reserve notes. 
it's this whole big process that doesn't need to exist if we just get rid of the Federal Reserve. These private globalist bankers based in Europe, basically the Rothschilds, Jew bankers, if we just get rid of the Federal Reserve and take back the power to issue currency, we wouldn't even have debt. Debt is this. This is this this is a representation of one dollar of debt. You know that twenty trillion dollars we owe. This is one of them. That's what this is. So that gold that the Treasury took back, that we had, that we still have until and when Nixon closed the gold window, we ended it at about eighty three hundred tons. That eighty three hundred tons of gold still exists. It's supposedly held in Fort Knox. It's supposedly held in the Federal Reserve Bank vaults. It's spread, it's spread out around the world, but that gold still exists. So even though they claim that we're on a fiat currency, that, you, that this isn't backed by anything, the gold that used to back this still exists and is still owned by somebody. And it ain't the, the population of the United States of America. So I would argue that we're still backed by gold. We just can't get it. Only the Jew bankers can get it. Only the people who actually know what money is get the gold. He who holds the gold makes the rules. And it was supposed to be the people of this country that makes the rules. We were supposed to be the ones holding the gold. Instead, the government does. The government holds the gold. The Jew bankers actually hold the gold. Not even... The Jew bankers, since they have the gold certificates, the claim on the gold... They, they make the rules, not the government, because it's he who holds the gold makes the rules. That's the bankers. They own the claim on the gold. And unfortunately, we're never going to see that wealth ever again. That wealth is, is long gone. That wealth is long gone. All you could do to protect yourself now, it's not an investment. It's a preservation of wealth. Start stacking some silver slowly. Buy some silver eagles. Get some constitutional junk silver, some Kennedy halves. I love Kennedy halves. And uh, stack some silver to protect yourself. And uh, this is my one kilogram stinky cash bar. I made this about a year ago. Pure silver. Custom poured, custom made. Only one in existence. Look how good that came out, guys. I'm, a, I'm an amateur uh, smelter silversmith if you i mostly melt copper scrap that i find in the garbage turn it into bars but uh i decided to melt some some scrap or not really scrap but some old silver rounds that uh i didn't really like and didn't hold any premiums i decided to melt them down and make this bar love this bar let me know if you anyone wants to make an offer on it Maybe I'll put it on eBay, but uh, I'm not really in the market to sell it right now, but it is pretty sweet. I don't know if I have any fans rich enough to want to buy that for me. Ooh, yeah. So, is there anything I missed in this? There was, you know, I, I, was, I was thinking about silver a lot today. I was thinking about money today. And that's when it dawned on me. People think Federal Reserve notes are dollars. We need to start calling Federal Reserve notes what they are. We need to stop referring to them as dollars. That is wizardry. That is such a trick. And I think the dollar with the one line through it, that represents a Federal Reserve note compared to the, the, the S with the two lines through it. That represents a real dollar. Now, that's just, that is just a theory of mine. I have not looked that up. I'm not basing that on anything. But it got me thinking, why is there two symbols for the dollar? Every currency on earth has its own symbol. The euro has its own symbol. The pound has its own symbol. The peso, the dollar, the Federal Reserve note, it's its own currency, which means it should have its own symbol. So yeah, we've been tricked. They swapped out the Washington $1 silver certificates with these $1 Federal Reserve notes. And now they're not even, you know, they're not even payable to the bearer on demand anymore. It's it, This is a promise to pay. This is an IOU that you can never redeem. It's like someone says, hey man, I owe you 20 bucks. But then you can never actually go and collect. It's just a note. It's like Dumb and Dumber. In the movie Dumb and Dumber, don't you think they were making fun of the United States currency? Think about it. And if you want to learn more about the currency, I have two, I have videos that I've made in the past. One is called The Flat Fiat Earth. 
it might be one of the best videos on YouTube to break down the history of currency and, and what happened, the trickery with the currency. How gold certificates that were payable to the bear on demand became IOUs that can never be redeemed. Look into that video, and uh, once you watch that video, watch this other video I made called um, The Petrodollar. The fall of the petrodollar and the collapse of the, the United States of America. Watch that video. You'll learn a lot from those two videos if you found this video informative. And if you enjoyed this video, click subscribe, give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, send me nudes, do all that. All right, guys? All right, stinky cash. Peace.